We were supposed to be 34 miles from ground zero. Well, it turned out we were less than 25. We were that close to this thing. And there was a 12 second interval from the time of detonation before you could look away. In seconds, it went from ground zero to 20,000 feet. The crater that there was that they put in the ocean was three miles across. By the time the detonation came, everybody was saying, well, this might be it. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande. I learned to ride before I learned to stand. Well, I know all the songs that the cowboys know, cause I learned them all on the radio. Yippee I O K A. That's a 1930s song. Still got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I started singing behind the microphone when I was six years old. By the time I was seven, I knew 20 songs by heart. I started playing an instrument at nine. I created my own band when I was in high school, had two half hour programs a week on the radio. I just can't even begin to tell all the things that I've done. Between being a musician and a singer and an auctioneer, sold real estate for 23 years, Two airplane crashes, totally paralyzed, said I'd never walk again. I went over a cliff in a truck, 174 feet, and I drove that truck back to the hospital with a broken back. I just had crazy, crazy life. When I got old enough, I had to make a choice, college or a service. And I went to the service because well, the war was on, the Korean War. And my dad was in the First World War, he was a corpsman. So between that and my brothers being in the service, I just felt like that I, I needed to do that. So that's why I went in. We went over seas 19, late 1950. I was a catapult operator on an aircraft carrier. They, you know, you get up on this catapult, and I, I, I launched aircraft off the carrier. The catapult was only about six feet from the edge of the flight deck where I stood. So the, the outside uh, landing gear was just inches from my head, and this wings right over the top of my head. So it was considered one of the most dangerous jobs in the air and the navy. But then, years later. I got to thinking about what we did and all the tonnage, 500 pound bombs, rockets, all that stuff that we sent over there and how many people we killed. And that affected me, still does. You're destroying other people's lives, whether they were good or bad, to me, that's not the point. It, it collateral damage. So in August 1952, we were over there on the west side mm -hmm. of Korea. Mm -hmm. And so one mm -hmm. night in the middle of the night, I woke up and the motion changed. And so the next morning when I got up, I went up on deck and the lieutenant commander standing there. I said, what's going on, sir? He said, well, I don't know, but we've changed direction. I said, I noticed that. Well, what we did, we had changed direction and headed back to the United States. And the reason for that was this hydrogen bomb situation. Let no one think that the expenditure of vast sums for weapons and systems of defense can guarantee the absolute safety for the cities and citizens of any nation. 
upon such a sound proposal as President Eisenhower made to the United Nations for the constructive use of atomic energy in the service of all mankind. A development affecting not only the future of humanity, but the security of our nation. And we left it, everybody was wondering, what's going on? Well, we found out on the way over there, why we were going, that they were going to detonate this big bomb, H-bomb. We had no idea what it was. We have minutes to go before the first flash, Mike shot, of Operation Ivan. Now, as you can imagine, feeling is running pretty high about now, and there's reason for it. If everything goes according to plan, We'll soon see the largest explosion ever set off on the face of the Earth. That is, the largest that we know of. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eye. Everybody that was on deck, uh, went up on the ca aircraft carrier deck, had to sit down on the deck with their back to the detonation point, pull the knees up by their face, put your arm across your knees and put your eye against your arm and don't look up for at least 12 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. It was so bright that there's no lie. You've heard stories of being able to, being bright enough to see the bone in your arm. You could, just like there was nothing over it, just it was bone. You couldn't see any sign of anything around it. So when it went off and it got so bright and so hot, we thought it wasn't gonna stop. When I looked around, there were guys sitting there crying, guys, afraid to look it was it was traumatic as soon as i turned around the 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 cloud was still boiling and moving up and lightning was flashing and the different colors of orange and pinks and things and the shock waves that come out there were three of them now there was four to six foot swells when those come out there they flattened it out just like a mirror there was no not even a ripple on that water just flattened it out. And when it hit the ship, it was just a huge whoom and shook the ship. I looked at the size of that thing and I, my God, we amount to nothing. So when someone can push a button and do that much destruction, human beings are, are nothing. This column of material that started falling back was over five miles across. That material, you gotta understand, was all radiated. All of a sudden, I looking on, and it was landing on my arms, and I was taking my hand and wiping it off my, and wiping it out of my hair. And it was over a quarter inch thick before they decided to wash the ship down. Eventually, somebody found out that it was a terrible amount of radiation, but the government at that time said it was nothing, no need to worry. Nothing but water, an island completely erased. Might was power, a kind of titanic energy released by stars. We could never talk about it. It was plain and simple in black and white that you were not to refer to it in any way, forever. The next time there was an actual hydrogen bomb detonated, and the one that the government had admitted to was in 54. They never mentioned 52. They said that of the 8,000 military people that were there on that test, by 1980, 65% were already dead or dying of cancer. And so, when I talked to the Nuclear Museum in New Mexico here a couple of years ago, they had been 65 years trying to find someone who was there and I was the only one. And they thought I might be the only one still alive. The findings from the doctors at the University of Berkeley 
they said that I had then one of the very, very few, less than one half of one percent, that had actually retarded aging. I'm 90 now, and no one believes that because I look a lot younger. But uh, like most women say when I tell them that, say, how do we get some of that radiation? I went in in March 5th of 50, and I got out on March 6th in 1955. I feel bad about what happens in war, but I see the reason for it and necessity of it because there's always someone on the evil side that tries to subdue everyone, and we can't allow that. So being a veteran, that's part of what I did. All my life, going back to six years old, I have always been wanting to do f for other people. Everything that I do is trying to help veterans and families. Every week on Monday, we get this stuff delivered and bring it out here and restore it here and then as it's needed we pass it out. It's just great to be able to do this and have uh, people know that they can depend on us until they get on their feet again. I gather these things in from merchants who recognize the value of the veterans and donate those things and then I take it down and give it away. on Warm Springs Reservation, and we're down next to the Deschutes River. This piece of ground lays along here. Uh, there's 10 acres that I'm going to utilize to build into a camping area for veterans and their families. All, all people who were involved in mental help for people, whether they're veterans or not, all say that water is one of the most soothing things there is on this earth to help people with problems mentally. And that's what I hope to accomplish with this. Oh, the wayward wind is a restless wind. Oh, restless wind. I don't there believe there's going to be anyone that would come down here and that wouldn't want to come back. The, next of kin. the tranquility here is breath. Next of kin. Yeah. Fabulous. To the wayward wind in a lonely shack by the railroad track. I spent my young Instead day. of looking at something to be done and but talking about it, go do it. And I, that's been my whole life. Maybe I am the kind of a person that likes to see things done that need to be done, and there's a benefit in it. The wayward wind is a restless wind. A restless wind. I hope to see people come down here with a frown on their face and leave here with a smile. That's what I want to see. Next of kin. The next of kin to the wayward wind.